This is a fight I've been waiting for quite some time, in the state of boxing with a lot of BS politics. This is historically one of the most important matches in the light flyweight division. Undefeated two division champion and current WBA and Ring Magazine champion Hiroto Kyoguchi against rival WBC champion Kenshiro Taraji. These two are undisputably the top two fighters in the weight class, so therefore this fight should very well be for the lineal title as well. In the history of the light flyweight division, there has only been 8 lineal champions. The last lineal champion at light flyweight was Giovanni Segura in 2010 after dethroning the legendary Ivan Calderon. It has remained vacant since. Not many boxing fights are held in the notorious Saitama Arena, but whenever there is one, it's a big deal. I'm not sure if it has to do with attendance as it's too large for most title fights with the exception of Pride FC and K1 easily having sold out crowds. Overcome our own voices here. The noise inside this arena is so extremely loud, you cannot believe it. And what separates Pride Fighting Championships from any other organization in the world is the attention to detail. The production values are unbelievable. In fact, prior to Inoue vs. Donaire in 2019, the last boxing match held in this arena was the historic Kameda Naido fight for the WBC and lineal flyweight title in 2009. Kameda Naido broke Japanese broadcasting records. It wasn't just a fight, it was a cultural event that everyone in the country was talking about, which such numbers are yet to be rivaled to this day. In this video, I'll do a quick review of both fighters. With that being said, let's start the video. Hiroto Kyoguchi started his pro career in 2016 and he moved along rather quickly picking up the OPBF title just 10 months into his pro career at 5-0. For those who don't know, the OPBF title signifies you are the best in the Pacific region. It's a rather important belt to win to enter the world class and get into title contention. The Japanese national title and the OPBF title is often highlighted of their importance in the Hajime no Ippo series. <laughs> as it's mostly an easy route for blue chip prospects from America and some western nations to fight for the title without these regional credentials, fight fans stateside do not see the true importance of these belts as others do overseas. One year and three months after turning pro, Kyogichi gets his first shot against IBF strawweight champion Jose Argumendo from Mexico. This was Jose's fourth title defense since dethroning the legend Katsunari Takayama. Kyogichi will put up a comfortable lead win by unanimous decision to become the IBF champion with the record of 8-0. <laughs> After failed efforts trying to unify the division against Thai champion Knockout CP Freshmart and Wanhang Menayoten, the perfect opportunity came knocking on the door of Hiroto. All while Hiroto was making those title defenses earlier, his fellow gym mate at the Watanabe Gym, Ryochi Taguchi, was on the cusp of some big fights. Former two-time champion Akari Ayagashi had moved down to Life Fly and captured the IVF title. At that time, you had four champions from Japan in that weight class, and there was a possibility of getting these guys together for unification. These plans would get spoiled as Milan Melendo would upset Yayagashi knocking him out in the first round to capture the title. After a close win against Heki Butler, the number two ranked Melindo was set up to fight number one ranked Taguchi in a unification for the IBF, WBA, and vacant Ring Magazine titles. Taguchi will win by unanimous decision to become the man at light flyweight. And just before he can actually enjoy being the champion in the weight class, he will get dethroned by Heki Butler to lose by a razor thin unanimous decision. Since Kyoguchi could not get the fights he wanted, he sought this perfect opportunity to not only become the champ in a weight class full of talent, but also avenge his gym mate. Kyoguchi would stop Butler in the 10th round to become champion. <laughs> Go, 
Kyoguchi would make four title defenses. Two out of those four defenses were overseas in America and Mexico. Kenshiro's father, Hisashi, was a successful fighter in his own right. He was a rather big middleweight, standing at 6 foot 2 and a half. He became the Japanese national champion in the middleweight division, and becoming the OPBF champion at light heavyweight. He would retire as the OPBF champ with the record of 20 wins and 1 loss, that 1 loss being up against Shinji Takahara, Japan's first middleweight champion. The young Kenshiro would immediately take after his father and rise through the ranks becoming the national boxing champion in college. Also yes, the inspiration to naming his son Kenshiro did come from the manga slash anime Fist of the North Star. Kenshiro would begin his pro career in late 2014, beating what I could say the lower weight class specific region equivalent to Emmanuel Augustus, Indonesia's Hedi Amol. After that, Kenshiro would swiftly move up through the ranks to win the OPBF and Japanese national title to put him in position to face newly crowned WBC champion Ganigan Lopez from Mexico. Lopez was ranked number 3 in the world while Kenshiro barely made the top 10 rankings, sitting at number 10. In a tough 12 round fight, Kenshiro was able to throne Lopez by majority decision and pick up the WBC title in his 10th pro bout. Kenshiro will face in his next fight number one ranked Pedro Guevara which was just as tough pulling away with another majority decision win. Before we get back to the rest of the video, be sure to hit that like button and if you're new, the subscribe button. Liking helps those good folks who don't come early to view these videos and be able to see them on their feed the day it's uploaded instead of days or sometimes weeks later. This comment section discussion topic is what fight, it could be either boxing or MMA, you've watched too many times for your own good. For me, I can't really give you an answer to that because of the obvious. Thanks for sticking around to the end, and let's get back to the video. With the four title unification plans being thrown down the drain due to Yayagashi losing to Melindo and Tanaka moving up to flyweight, as soon as Kyoguchi came into the picture defeating Heki Butler to become the man at light flyweight on New Year's Eve 2018, this was the fight to set up. But with big fights like this, you need to wait just a little bit so there will be a much more broader public interest that would get people who don't even follow boxing talking about this matchup. So in the meantime, the two were making title defense after title defense. Kenshita was by far the most active. He won the title in May of 2017, and he would make not one, but two defenses to end the year off, then defend the title three times in 2018, knocking out number five ranked Lopez in their rematch, and getting a seven round TKO win against number two ranked Milan Melindo. Only two defenses in the year 2019, but Kenshiro was on the fastest pace of beating the most infamous boxing record in Japan, Yoko Gushkin's title defense record. So many fighters just recently in the past 20 years came close but so many have failed. Yoko made 13 title defenses of the WBA light flyweight title before being dethroned and retiring at the young age of 25. It really never fails. Once a fighter from Japan passes 8 or 9 consecutive title defenses, TV networks are already discussing the possibility of this record being broken. Yoko being bombarded about the idea while present during the fights, further adding more pressure on the fighters. It is just as pressuring as rivaling the undefeated record in the NFL that the 72 Miami Dolphins have held for 50 years. With boxing in Japan coming to an immediate halt in 2020 and not really opening back up till 2021, and another outside related incident not helping Kenshiro's situation, his comeback to boxing post pandemic will start off fine beating Hisada, an unrivaled bad September of that year against Masamichi Yabuki. Yabuki, who came in his career best shape, the far more prepared, would catch Kenshiro off guard, forcing a tough fight to win by TKO in the 10th round ending the title defense streak. 11 round, punch in the middle of the punch, the referee was able to win the fight. 
This was just a month and some change before Teofimo Lopez versus George Cambosos, and this fight was a leader for upset of the year. A rematch will be quickly made, and in March of this year, Kenshiro would make quick work of Yabuki, knocking him out in the third round to recapture the title, proving that Masamichi just caught him off on a bad night. And this right here would set up the Kyoguchi unification. This is a 50-50 fight. Both guys have exquisite boxing skills. Both are fast, possibly equal in the speed category. And both are big punchers, with the two having the same amount of knockouts. Due to Hiroto Kyoguchi signing a partnership deal with Matchroom Sport, that gave him an easier opportunity to go to the States for his US debut and fight when boxing was still closed in Japan. Due to the signing here, this is also a great opportunity for us fans to tune in without using alternative but not guaranteed ways of viewing this fight. It is a real privilege that we all can view this fight on the zone as they have international airing rights to this matchup. So for anyone who is interested in watching this historic matchup, it will be showing on the zone. With that being said, this is my preview of Kilguchi vs Kenshiro. For more videos like these, be sure to like, share, and if you're new, subscribe. Subscribe to the Patreon for Patreon-backed projects and early access. I'm Olvis Sancho, and I'm out.